as a person God in prayer. Spiritual God, created in our pure and clean hearts. And may we hear what we hear this evening today, your word. And may we put your word into practice. Now and always. Amen. A young soldier and his commanding officer had gotten on a train together. The only available seats were across from a pretty young lady and her grandmother. As the four began to get to know each other, it was very obvious that the young soldier and the young lady were attracted to one another. The train went into a tunnel, and the whole car was plunged into darkness. Suddenly, the four passengers heard two very distinct sounds. The unmistakable smack of two people kissing, followed by the more unmistakable sound of someone's face being slapped. <laughs> now, the grandmother thought, I can't believe that young soldier had the audacity to kiss my granddaughter. However, I am relieved that she gave him a slap for it. The commanding officer thought, I don't blame the boy for kissing the girl, but it's a shame that she missed him and slapped me instead. <laughs> the young lady thought, I'm glad that he kissed me, but I wish my grandmother had not shown her anger by slapping him. As the train emerged from the tunnel and the light once again beamed through the car, the soldier could not help but smile. He had managed to kiss a pretty girl and slap his commanding officer in the face. <laughs> in its simplest form, darkness is the absence of light. And like the young man in our story, sometimes the darkness allows us to get away with things that we couldn't otherwise do when the lights were on. Light is seen as good and pure and revealing. Dark is viewed as bad and mysterious, dismal and gloomy. I know this to be true because Dark Vader belonged to the dark side, and we all know what he is like. In biblical times, darkness was evil, and light, or in this particular instance, Christ as light, was seen as good. In our Old Testament reading, it states the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Or to put it in modern terms, the people who lived their lives in sinful, bad, and wicked ways uh, did not even, and did not even take God into account, those people have seen a great light. God's love has given to them His only Son, who brought light and goodness and hope into a world that desperately needed it. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of light. But tonight I want us to look at three purposes of light and three purposes of Jesus to see how important the image of Jesus as light is to our faith and indeed to us on this Christmas Eve. Number one, light reveals. If you are in a dark room, and you don't want to bang your shin into something, you turn on the light. If you want to take a look, closer look at something, shining a light onto that object can be helpful. Flood and search lights are used to find things that are missing. A lighthouse can reveal rocks and dangers to ships at sea. Intense lights are used in surgeries and by dentists so that they can find and see issues and man the infected area. If you want to see something that is in an envelope, hold it up to the light. I've heard that works, but I would never do that on my own. Light reveals. Jesus reveals. When Jesus is in our life, all is out in the open. There is nothing that Christ does not know. In Matthew chapter 10, when Jesus is explaining how much God cares for us, he states, even the very hairs on your head are numbered. Jesus as light reveals all the impurities, all the marks, all the scars of life. Jesus as light reveals all the good, strong, and unlocked potential in us and shows us what we are capable of becoming. 
Jesus as light exposes the impure and through his grace and forgives us, makes us pure and strong. Just as you cannot hide things in a family book room, you cannot hide things from Christ. We cannot pretend to be Christians if we say we believe in Jesus, then we have to live our lives in that manner. We must face our sin and turn from it. We are not allowed to turn to Jesus at one moment and then turn around and do whatever we want with our lives in the next moment. When we live a Christ-centered life, our sinfulness is revealed. Jesus reveals to us God's love and grace and forgiveness and unconditional peace and joy. And when we reveal our innermost thoughts and fears and anxieties to Christ, then there is a cleansing and a peace that lights our hearts and fills our souls. Jesus is the light that reveals the way to God. Number two, light shines. Now take the example of the sun in the sky. It has been shining for billions of years, and it has never stopped shining. The sun doesn't take every other Friday off, and it does not go on vacation. It has been said that the sun is always shining some way. And when light shines, the darkness disappears. Its very presence gets rid of the darkness. The definition of darkness is the absence of light. For a room to be dark, the whole room must be dark. But you only need a pinhole for light to enter into that dark room. Light shines. And Jesus shines. Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, and His light has been shining ever since He was sent into the world. That is not to say that there have not been those throughout history who have tried their very best to extinguish the light of the world. Jesus, one time of Nazareth, rejected him. The Pharisees and the Sadducees and the other leaders feared him. He was framed and used and abandoned. He was discredited, denied, and betrayed. He was beaten and ridiculed. He was pierced with a spear. He was nailed to a tree. He was mocked, humiliated, and even went to hell. And this practice of trying to discredit Jesus has been in place ever since that first Good Friday. As a society, Jesus is not allowed in schools or in television, and in some places in the world, it can be dangerous, even life-threatening, to claim Christianity. It may appear that society has taken our Lord away or extinguished Him as the light of the world, but He has not gone anywhere. It doesn't matter what is said about Him, what is done to Him, what is done to others in His name, there is nothing that can ever be done to extinguish that light of the world. Jesus shines. Jesus as light always emerges in the darkness. And Christ can bring an everlasting light to every dark corner of the world. The third example is light makes things grow. There is a close connection between light and the light. No fruits would ever ripen. No flower would ever blossom, no plant would ever grow without the light of the sun. Light is also associated with healing properties as well. When, I, I won't embarrass them and say which one, but when one of my children was born, they were a little bit jaundiced or yellow. And living in Florida, the cure was, the doctor told us to take the child put them in the sun and bake them for 20 minutes every day until the yellow went away because light heals. It has healing properties. It helps things to grow. Sunlight heals and empowers us. And I will posit that it's the same for us. Living things do not grow without sunlight. We too will never grow and thrive without the sun's light. We may exist, we may be living beings, we may even be good, decent, successful people. But we will not flourish and live up to our full potential without that light of Christ. Without light, living things die. Without Jesus as our light, we too cannot survive. Christ comes to us as the light of the world, a light that reveals, a light that shines, a light that makes things grow. Now, it seems to me that this is the point in the sermon where 
we should wrap this all up with a brilliant story. So I'm going to try to do that right now. Of course, if it's a brilliant story, it's not my story. It's from, a, it's from an illustration called Even More Hot Youth Illustration Talks. And I don't mention it every time, because if I mention it every single time I told a story from this book, by about March, I'll say, if this man tells one more story from that book, but it's a wonderful collection, and I use a lot of these stories. And this one tonight is, I will start it by saying once upon a time, so you know how true and accurate the story is. And it's about, this story takes place at the turn of the century, when electricity was starting to be the thing in the world. And electricity came to this small town, and they wanted to have a family set as guinea pigs, they wanted to light up their house with electricity to show everyone what it could do. So they went to a family called the O'Leary's. And the O'Leary's thought about it and said, you know, I think this electricity thing is a fad. I don't think it's going to work. And if it's really going to be the thing in the future, let's wait and see how it works. And they decided they didn't want to be the test family. So the electric company found another family, the McMillans, and they were all for it. And they signed the paperwork as quick as they could so that they could be the test family to see if electricity could light up a house. And so for a week, workmen came in and they knocked holes in walls and they put wires everywhere and they put light bulbs everywhere and they put in light sockets and they, and, and they totally revolutionized this house. And the family decided that instead of turning on the light switch to see if it worked, they have a house party, they'd have a big neighborhood block party, they called it a lighting party. And they would have everybody in, they'd have a whole neighborhood see at one time what the electricity could do in someone's house. And the whole neighborhood came, including the O'Leary. And they got everyone Mom. together, and they put everyone in the room, and they flipped the switch, and there was that crackle of electricity, and the whole house lit up. And everybody clapped and cheated. One person said, how lovely. And another person said, Mommy. how revolutionary. And the third person said, how filthy. And they were right. Once all the lights came on and the whole house was lit, you could see how dirty everything in that house was. You could see how the oil lamps and everything that had been used for years had marred and marked the walls had created films and layers of dust, had dulled the paint, and made everything very unappealing and dingy. Well, that, of course, did it for the O'Leary's, and they said, we will never have electricity in our house. And so they went on with the party, and the next day, the Macmillans got to work, and they scrubbed, and they cleaned, and they removed the dust, and they cleaned the curtains, and they bleached the house, and they painted the walls. And pretty soon, in a couple of days, that house was sparkling and gleaming. And they went on with their lives, living a happier, healthier, and brighter existence. And the O'Leary's didn't. They went back to their dimly lit houses and went on with their lives the way it had always been. That's the story, and it connects with Christ this way. Jesus reveals, Jesus shines, Jesus gives us the ability to go beyond ourselves and grow. And sometimes when he does that to us, it may seem dirty, and it may seem revealing, and it may seem ugly and embarrassing. But that's okay, because with a little work and that light working and shining with us, we can get rid of all the dirt and the bad things and the embarrassment, and we can go on to brighter happier and healthier lives, all because Jesus lights and reveals and helps us to grow beyond ourselves with him lighting our world each and every day. I wish you all a happy and blessed Christmas and let us go to God. Gracious God, we look at this night. We celebrate the birth of Christ. Help us to do so with happy and a now and always. Amen.